Hi church, if we haven't met before, my name is Lee and I have the privilege of serving as one of the pastors here at Elim Church, Northampton. First of all, how exciting is it that we'll be able to meet together in the flesh starting on Easter Sunday? I'm so excited and I for one can't wait to see you all again and worship together. And I'll be honest, not to be speaking just through a camera, but to actually physical people in the room. God is good, eh? By not seeing you all for so long, it makes me want to appreciate it so much more when we're back together. So I'm going to share with you over the next 20 minutes or so the final instalment of our I Am campaign, I Am The Vine. It's been great to journey together on this, to rediscover who Jesus said he is. So before we read the passage together, let me provide you with some context. And I think that's important. We're really nearing the point here of Jesus being arrested and taken to his death. Jesus knew this, of course, and I'm sure this changed his behaviour. He's already looking over the cliff into the darkness that he's about to fall into with the cross. But even knowing all of this, he's preparing his disciples for his departure, the best that he can. See, the significance of this church is so great, it's often words of importance that reveal the deep loves and concerns of the heart. Jesus is saying something so close to his heart and hoping that we hear and receive his words. Recently, someone really close to me became suddenly ill and was in the process of being rushed to the hospital. At the time, I didn't know the magnitude of the illness, but it looked really bad. I had not spoken to them yet before they left for the hospital, and I was concerned that I might not be able to, and time was running out. I called their home and asked to speak to them before they went. I could hear the rushing of people in the background preparing them to go to the hospital. But I had to take time to tell them how much I love them and would be praying for them. I believe due to this lockdown period, we'll appreciate more the time we have when we can meet together again. There'll be more of an urgency in how we can communicate our heart with our friends and family and even communicate in the gospel to those who do not know Jesus. See, Jesus' time with the disciples was running out at this point and he wanted us all to hear his point. There are two instances of Jesus referencing him being the vine here. So let's have a quick look at them now. John 15 verse 1 to 5 says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. So firstly, let's concentrate on four main words in that passage. The vine, the branches, the fruit and the gardener. So how is Jesus the vine and what vine is he? The vine is the source of where the branches are connected. Many of us live in urban areas. We don't live in farms or in the countryside. The Old Testament usage and historical knowledge implies that Jesus is referring to a grapevine often used for making wine, particularly in that time and place. In fact, the grapevine is mentioned more than any other plant in the whole of the Bible, believe it or not. Jesus had just shared the Last Supper with his disciples and it wouldn't surprise me if they'd been walking past some vineyards as well. Some scholars also think it may be because Israel was also referred to as a vine in earlier scriptures, such as Isaiah 5, Jeremiah 2, and Ezekiel 15. This is so like the character of Jesus, isn't it? Making references to everyday items to explain his truths. Everything comes through the vine. It holds everything fruitful together. It is the foundation of the plant. Without the vine, everything is fruitless and dead. Our family the other day went on a lovely walk in a place called Halston. Is it Halston or Halston? I've no idea, but that's where we went. And it was uh, the other day, a beautiful countryside area. We walked past an area where some trees had been chopped down. The trunks had been severed and the leaves and branches were rotten and dead. They stood out so much in the middle of this small forest because they were so lifeless. Berries were not to be seen at all because everything was supported and relied upon the trunk and the roots. Just as we are reliant upon Jesus, we are the branches who produce fruit and we're reliant upon the vine as a source. Jesus specifically says that we are the branches. 
which when connected to the vine will bear fruit. We are many branches connected to the vine. There is a reference to our connection to Christ and each other in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 13, where Paul says, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For one in spirit, we are all baptised into one body. See, as Christians, we don't run the risk of not being connected to the vine. Later in John 16, verse 1, Jesus says that he has told us all of this so we are not to fall away. Are you connected to the source, Jesus? So that's the vine. What is the fruit? The fruit is the product of a connection to the vine. Another amazing thing to know here, in the Bible, the word fruit almost always refers to character. The fruits of the Spirit, remember, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our fruits are refreshing to the world and nourish others. Fruit is life. It is colourful. It is flavoursome. It is good for you. It keeps you lean and energised. Fruits also refer to evangelism, which in simple terms means sharing Jesus with others. In verse 16 of John 15, Jesus tells us that we are appointed to bear fruit, which in the Greek translation says tithemi, which means to commit or assign. Pastor Jackie and I started a new diet plan with our app on our phones. I admit mine lasted about two days, but Jackie's still going strong. In the app, it describes what types of food you should eat and how much. All foods are separated into different colours. Reds being the things we should avoid, like fizzy drinks and chocolate. Yellow being things we can eat regularly, like chicken and rice. And greens we are encouraged to eat lots of, such as fruit and vegetables. Something interesting here, 100 grams of grapes is better for us than 100 grams of rice because it contains water, vitamins and hydrates as all as well, which is essential for us to stay alive. When we produce fruit, it also doesn't just nourish us, but it also sustains others. So where in our lives do we produce fruit? When we produce fruit, our character changes. We show the love, the peace, the joy, the patience of God. We may have heard people say that the more they become connected to Jesus, the more they can handle situations better, the better of a person they become. In fact, the more we are connected to Jesus, the more we become like him. People notice, trust me, I'm sure many of you have seen the miraculous ways that people have turned their lives around when developing a relationship with Jesus. My life at one point was influenced by other things more than Jesus. I had a good career where I earned a lot of money. I flew around the world. I had a brand new car every six months and went on several holidays a year. My career and the people within it was influencing my life so much. I was more connected to them than I was to Christ. My fruits began to dry up. I started to become a person that I didn't like and probably other people around me didn't either. I was never nourished or satisfied. Whenever I got the newest Mercedes or promotion, it still wasn't enough. It wasn't nourishing or sustaining me. It was fast food actually, which tasted good, but didn't nourish me, just handled my hunger for a while. See guys, what well, I'm not saying that a promotion or a brand new Mercedes is a bad thing, but when those things are our main connections, they will never sustain us. Notice right at the beginning of this passage, Jesus says, I am the true vine. See, just as I was, we can be connected to false vines in our lives that will not sustain us or bear fruit. These could be false things like materialism, our careers. It could be lust. It could be money. It could be greed. So now let's look at the gardener. So how is God the gardener? Let's use our imagination for a second. And I think we've got to do this in this lockdown period. Picture that we are in the south of France in a vineyard on a beautiful sunny day. That'd be amazing right now, wouldn't it? We are responsible for the, va for the wine that is made. To make great wine, we need ripe, juicy grapes. As we know, ripe grapes get their nourishment from the branches. To keep the connection, the branches in the way that aren't producing fruit need pruning. Regular trimming, watering and care. I think I found my new vocation there, actually. The branches need to remain in the vine to bear fruit. I'm going to come back to practical ways that we can remain or stay connected to Jesus. But first of all, let's dig a little deeper. That was an awful dad joke that I apologise. Let's dig deeper into God being the gardener. 
See, when you are at one with Christ, God will prune the things in you that don't bear fruit. This may seem concerning that God takes things away from us, but here is something very important to remember. A skilled gardener never cuts off anything that wouldn't have been a loss to keep and a gain to lose. Let me say that again so it sticks with you. A skilled gardener never cuts off anything that wouldn't have been a loss to keep and a gain to lose. See, God loves you. He wants the best for you. He has a great plan for you. He wants you to bear fruit. He doesn't want there to be anything that will hinder your development. So if he takes it away, it's because it's getting in the way of your growth. By keeping it in your life, it was actually hurting you, usually without you even knowing it. The Bible is full of people who God took something away from. Moses had to flee Egypt for what he had done, but God brought him back to lead out the Israelites. Joseph was removed from his family and his father, but later become a key leader over the nation. Paul lost his freedom. He was thrown into prison, but later became one of the most influential people in the history of Christianity. See, pruning is not a punishment. It's a reward. We can either be miserable by dragging around the dead branches in our lives, or we can allow God to let him prune them away. Even though it can be uncomfortable, and trust me, it is, the best thing we can do is to let him take away the things in our lives that are stopping us from growing and being fruitful. When I made the decision to focus more on my work with Jesus, overnight, things gradually started to change. I lost some friends who didn't I have things in common with. We lost a lot of money as I led to leave, leave my job because it challenged my conscience. Further down the line, we lost the comfort of our home and closeness to our family in Sheffield as God was calling us away from where we lived. In these types of moments, we may think that we're actually being punished, but all God is doing is pruning us so he can provide us with a better future. And he definitely, certainly did that. Do not focus on the change, but focus on the one who makes the change. So lastly, let's look at how we can stay connected and remain in God. There's three ways that we can do this. And in the Bible, there is a clear roadmap. Firstly, we need to remain in Christ. Another word used in different translations is abide. Abide comes from the old English word called abidan, meaning to wait. God wants us to almost slow down to speed up, spend precious time in his presence, listen for what he wants us to do. God communicates with us and the more time we spend with him, the more we will hear his voice. Be intentional about making time and space to hear from God. A relationship is a two-way street and it involves both parties speaking. Well, it should be anyway. An old teacher of mine used to say, you have one mouth and two ears for a reason. Take time to speak to God. Put in extra time to hear from him. Remaining in Jesus is not just one of many things that we are asked to do, but it's from where everything proceeds. The well-known church leader and theologian John Piper says, hour by hour, abiding in Jesus means hour by hour, trusting him to meet all of your needs and be all our treasure. To be in Christ means we have a new legal standing and a new relationship with God. We don't just want to make things right with God, but also want to be with God. We're made new by being in Christ, freed from our sin and our worldly endeavours. But he also gives us what we need by giving us himself. Let's rely upon the Holy Spirit to bring us closer to Christ. He desires a loving friendship with us. How about before bed each night, make an inventory of how your day went and what you've been remaining in on that day. Have you remained in anger, anxiety or worry? If you haven't remained in him, you've probably been remaining in something else. Then talk to Jesus and ask for help to remain in him more. Secondly, we need to remain in his word. He already left us many words of influence and instruction. We don't need to hear these again. Verse seven in that passage says, Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. If we remain in his word, our wishes will actually become God's wishes. We'll hear the beating heart of God and the more we re read his word. Try the Bible app, which is free on most smartphones. Start a reading plan and follow it through. Some of us in church have grouped together and we're reading the Bible in the year plan on there. It's amazing how God is speaking to us all in different ways through this. The Her Women's group in our church are currently reading through a Christian book together and are meeting weekly to share how God has spoken to them through it. 
Go out your comfort zone. Make yourself accountable to others. Let people on similar journeys around you, who you trust, give you a small metaphorical kick or an arm around you when you need it. You're not on your own. This is the main reason, actually, why our church is here, to encourage others in our journeys and to hold each other accountable, to guide new people along the best that we can in their faith, to bring the good news of Jesus to those who don't know it, and then to support them along in their journeys. Our church vision, if you don't know it, has three important elements, devotion to God, development of people and demonstration of kindness. It can be on our website. It's actually on our website if you'd like to take a look further. So lastly, we need to remain in his love. In verse nine of that passage, Jesus says, as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. God loves you so much. As a daughter loves his sons and daughters. He loves you enough to sacrifice his son to save us from our sins. He isn't someone who is ever far away from you. In verse 10 of that passage, Jesus says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Be motivated to follow what he wants us to do. Let's be intentional about showing love through being grateful to him and showing love to others as well. Give thanks for what he has given to us, where he has taken us from and where we are going. I remember the old song and I'm not going to sing it for you. My shackles are gone. My spirit is free. Oh, praise the Lord. He lifted me. My sins are forgiven and now I am free. It's a celebration of thanks. Guys, Christianity is far more than holding the right beliefs and adopting the right behaviours. It's salvation. If you haven't heard that word before, it simply means to be protected from the consequences of our sin. In Acts 4 verse 12, it says of Jesus, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Remaining in him is the only way we can do this. We enter into a union with God where we should truly be. The relationship we have with God is also abundant, life-giving and soul-thrilling. The firmer the connection to the vine, the more fruitful we become. Our hearts will desire for more of him. It transforms how we praise and worship. It adjusts our attitude to serving him in church, our generosity and helping others around us. Before I close, I'd love to give this opportunity for anyone who wants to either be reconnected to Jesus, the true vine, or establish a new connection to him. If you have before and you've wavered, there's always a way back. The connection is a journey, but the first step is to acknowledge this and make that commitment. You can do this by saying this to God. So if you feel right now, I will say a simple prayer and you can repeat it after me. It doesn't matter that I can't hear you. You might even be watching this at 10 o'clock at night. It doesn't matter. God can hear you right now. Dear God, thank you that you love me. Thank you that I always have the opportunity to come to you again. Please help me in connecting with you more. Give to me the joys of your salvation. I need you. Help me to be more like you and to be fruitful in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I hope and pray my words have stirred your hearts today. If you did pray that prayer, you've made one of the best decisions of your life and God is so pleased with you right now. We'd love to help you on your journey of faith. We are here for you if you need it. You can connect with us by visiting www.elimnorthampton.com slash connect, where we'd love to get in touch with you and support you as much as we can. Mike and Tanya are going to lead us in a song called Graves into Gardens, which declares and celebrates the life that comes when we reconnect with him. Let's worship together.